The vice presidential debate last night was perhaps the most important in history. And while much more polite than the first presidential debate, and while the moderator tried to cover a lot of ground, neither Mike Pence nor Kamala Harris felt obliged to stick to the topic and answer the questions asked. Joining me on the Morning Show News for Jack's political analyst and head of the Jacksonville University Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. And Rick, that said, in the end, most of the debate was a referendum on President Trump and his handling of the pandemic, and that probably should not be a surprise to anybody, should it? Well, Bruce, it was not a surprise that the very first question out of the box for Susan Page was on COVID-19. Uh, Kamala Harris was very well prepared for that, and one of her goals uh, was to make it a referendum on the president. The vice president, however, who had a good night, uh, pivoted in his discussion during the 90 minutes to try to redefine that issue, to try to make it into a choice, of course, between President Trump and Joe Biden. Both of them had some strong points during the evening, but no, it was not a surprise that COVID-19 was front and center last night. Now, Harris brought up the Trump tax issue and the president's health. Pence sees the opportunity to attack the Biden agenda, try to get an answer about Biden and his attempts. Would he try to expand the Supreme Court bench? Harris deflected, wouldn't answer that. Was there anything last night that may be a game changer at the polls? Bruce, in the end, I don't think last night was a game-changing debate. But believe it or not, I think it was helpful to both campaigns, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, it was a very good debate. It was it sharply contrasts with what we saw last week. More substance was covered. More policy was covered. It was more civil. Having said that, it did have its flaws. The candidates, and you mentioned this, just decided not to answer a bunch of questions. Sometimes it was rhetorical. Uh, sometimes it hurt them. Also, they did, inter they did interrupt. Having said that, going into this debate, Kamala Harris, and the Biden campaign, the first rule is do no harm, let this continue on the trajectory that it's on. And that was really the case. She did do no harm. In fact, she had some strong moments. Therefore, the Biden campaign continues, did not get hurt. For, for the vice president, he had a little bit of a tougher task. He, the campaign for the Trump, on the Trump side, a little bit on its heels, the president getting COVID-19 down in the polls, last week's debate. He needed to stop the bleeding and get it on the right track. He was very successful, had a very strong evening. Uh, for those on the Republican side, there was a lot to like last night. He did give them something to rally around. So I do think both campaigns accomplished a lot last night to set up next week. Were there any missteps? There were several, but let me highlight two. Uh, one a misstep, I believe, on the, on the Biden side and one on the Trump side. For Kamala Harris, it may not be so much as a misstep because maybe it was calculated, but Vice President Pence, not Susan Page, went directly at the question of, will you increase the court beyond nine members. This is called packing the court, taking it from nine to 11, 13, or 15. This is something FDR tried in the late 1930s. The Supreme Court has been nine members for over 150 years. Big issue. Will you try to change it? She was simply non-responsive. He asked several times. So he really hammered that point home. Score one on the Republican side. However, Kamala Harris, very forceful on health care, very forceful on pre-existing conditions. And when it came to health care, the question went to the vice president. He went back to a previous question. He was pretty much non-responsive on the health care issue. That may have been strategic, but I think it, it was costly. So each time during the debate, there were those moments in which they were non-responsive, spoke too long at times, elevated from last week, but still there were some times when it could have been much better. So what are the reasons this vice presidential debate was more important than any other in the 40 year history of these debates is that these two may realistically one day be president. Now, the lasting impression, if there is one, will be about who these two people are and who they're capable of being in perhaps the not too distant future. That said, did they seem presidential? You know, Bruce, you make a really good point. When you look at the ages of, of the vice president, who's 77, and the president, who's 74, when you take a look at 2024, when these could be two of the leading candidates, last night might have been, been a preview of what the future holds. And I think both of them passed that threshold. The expectations may have been higher for Kamala Harris because of her, her, her background as a lawyer and her, as a prosecutor. Not sure if she met all those high expectations, but she certainly met the bar that you just talked about. Vice President Pence, at times speaking a little bit too long, which may have been uh, a detriment in the eyes of some, had a very strong night, especially substantively, and so I think he met that bar too. I think both of them acquitted themselves well on that front. And everybody always wants to know who came out on top, so if you had to declare a winner. 
This was very much, I think, a eye of the beholder debate. And by that, I mean, if you're on the Democratic base, you liked what you saw. If you're in the Republican base, you liked what you saw. What I saw myself was that in some areas, Kamala Harris had the edge. Kamala Harris had the edge, I believe, on coronavirus and health care. However, the vice president was very strong on taxes and the economy, very strong on the Supreme Court, and demonstrated a pretty substantive command on China, foreign policy, and energy. So both of them had some strengths. In the end, this thing moves forward, and it sets up next debate as being more important than ever. So we're going to call it a toss-up in Rick Mullaney's eyes. Thanks. We'll be right back.